On today's show, we're gonna be looking at the G9 at a first look at some of the autofocus continuous capabilities on this pre-production unit, and we're gonna see just how good it is. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live thrice weekly show here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, here to talk about all kinds of things, photography and video and camera-ish related. It's just a free-for-all kind of a fun kind of a show. And if you haven't tuned in lately, you may have not seen the new set. This is, this is kind of fun. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. If you haven't subscribed, do that whole subscribe thing. If you like the video, by the time you're done watching, hit that thumbs up thing. You know how it works. We do this live thing every three days a week, sometimes more. And uh, if you hit that little bell, you get notified when I'm live and then we do a little pre-show and you come in and you see that, it's all kinds of fun. So today we're talking about the G9, the Lumix G9 here. It is apparently, I thought it was shipping next week, but apparently some people already have them in their hands. So awesome for you guys. You have a newer version than I have. I've been working with pre-production hardware and a version 0.3 of the software. I actually just got 1.0 firmware. I haven't even added it in here yet. So I have no idea what the changes are. But what we're gonna look at is just a few sequence of shots showing off the autofocus continuous, and this is all about still photography, we're not talking video here, for still photography, and show you some of the results that I got from a kind of easy to medium to harder challenge. Now, I, I really, what I want to do, what I'm going to do, is shoot some good sports. We were trying to get into a hockey game that never worked out. I've got a basketball game that I'm gonna be able to shoot in a couple of weeks, but basically the fastest moving thing I could find was my three-year-old son, which I know some people are going, okay, come on, this is a kid, How this is ridiculous. But clearly, if that's what you're thinking, you've never seen my kid. This little guy is lightning in a bottle. He has two speeds, sleep and run. And so photographing him is kind of a challenge. So I thought, hey, there's a great opportunity. Let's take this camera out and see if it can capture greased lightning that is my little boy. So that's what we are looking at. So I'm gonna start off with a simple sequence where you'll see the subject is, it's actually my kid and my wife, and they're they are kind of farther away. So, and I'm shooting this all with the 12 to 60 Leica lens, by the way. So just, this is the, the kit Leica lens, if you buy it as a kit. Uh, and and uh, it's just not super shallow depth of field, it's a little bit distance, but you'll see. It does just fine on this, and then we'll get progressively harder. So let's take a look at the photos here. We're looking at this in Lightroom CC. And there, you can see caught in midair there. It's not super high shutter speed. What are we at here? One uh, twenty-fifth of a shutter, second shutter speed. And they're in focus there. And as they're running away from me, they do maintain focus. Now, again, not hard. Now, that one that looks like a little motion blur. Not hard to capture because, again, the subject's pretty far away, there's pretty good depth of field, so we're not talking anything too spectacularly exciting here, but as a first simple test, it's good to see that, you know, that sort of thing works just fine. So, so there's our first setup, there's our first lineup. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Next, let's get a little bit harder. On the next sequence, I'm shooting through a fence. There's this, there's these fences all over, kind of shooting through the fence, and I believe, I didn't take notes because, you know, I'm out with my family, but I believe I'd sent it to the single point autofocus to make sure that the fence didn't get in the way and pointing that at the kid who is now running towards me. And you'll see, I think he's walking a little bit and then he starts to run as he gets a little bit faster here. So let's take a look at that. So I'm focusing on him and here he comes, starting to kind of, maybe we'll call this a trot and there we go. There's a full on run as he's running towards me and the camera does a superb job of holding onto him as he's coming in. Uh, now, so that, that, one's, that was kind of the medium one. Now we get into the bigger one. This is the one where it's definitely a bit more of a challenge. And again, the point of me showing these pictures here is reminding you again, pre-production software, uh, pre-production firmware on the camera. So any mistakes you might be seeing potentially could be getting better. Like I said, 1.0 is out. I just haven't loaded it up yet. Um, this is definitely the more challenging one. It's a longer sequence of photos. He's full on running, little maniac. And... Uh, you can see the camera does really well. It misses once, and I think that's pretty darn good. So let's take a look at this. Go in here. So here he is walking, and then he's gonna suddenly decide that the, what he really wants to do is start to run. Boom, so there he is, full tilt run, and it is totally locked focused on him. He's coming straight towards me. Now there's the one shot where it misses. So we go from this, where it's, for whatever reason, it's grabbed the background. And I should point out here, I think that at this point, my default shooting mode for this is face detection. And there's a new focusing system thing happening in here where it's finding 
more like object detection. So I've got the face. I mean, if the face is close, it does the face for sure, the cross eye, cross on the eyes and so on. But as the subject gets farther away, it maybe not, I, maybe isn't identifying the face, but it sees a moving object. It puts a larger box around the entire subject, which is really interesting. It's the first time I've seen it in the G9, um, is in the G9. So that is the mode I'm pretty sure that that's the mode I'm in here. So it is finding this moving subject and locking onto it. So it did, as we saw, it, it missed there, but then it immediately goes back to him and it's gonna hold focus as he gets closer. Now you can see, I mean, he's full on running at this point. And we keep going closer and closer and it, just grabs him the entire time. Boom, 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 even if, as he gets really close, really close, and we're probably getting, yeah, at that point we're getting close to the edge of how close the camera will focus at that focal length, but he is still being held there. So back through that sequence again, going back to the beginning. So there's that one shot where it misses. So starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seventh is missed, and then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I think that was the last one. 21, oh, that was the last one. So 21 shots in sequence there, one of them where it missed focus. Not too shabby, not too shabby. I think that's doing excellently well. Now I'm, I am looking forward to shooting sports with it to get something a little bit more dynamic. Uh, again, I know this isn't the toughest test in the world, but the three-year-old is fast. Uh, and I, I'm impressed, I like it. It was the first time I really took the camera out to do anything like this. I've had the camera for a little while. I know I should have been doing more with it, but. I didn't have the sports, the weather sucked around here. Uh, there's only so many times you can take your kid out and say, run, and he just looks at you like, seriously. Um, but it worked, I think it worked out really well. And then just for fun, because, wait, did I put them all in here? Show you a couple of fun favorite photos. Oh, I guess I do have another sequence. Oh, I do have another sequence here, yeah. I forgot about this one. So he's not really running so much in this, but just, again, coming straight towards me. Um, stopped to do a little exposure change in the camera where it gets brighter there and it's maintaining focus on him quite well. And just because it's fun and I can do this sort of thing, I will I'll take a look at a couple of favorites in here, uh, a couple of treated pictures. I'm really pleased with how these came out. I'm really digging, uh, how do I do a full screen on this? There we go. Really digging the camera overall. These are obviously treated in Lightroom to give a look to them, um, but enjoying it, really enjoying the camera, really enjoying shooting with it. It's so funny because I've been doing so much video work lately that I've kind of not been focusing on stills. And it's nice to, to grab this camera that really is all about stills and go out and do that a little bit more again. And obviously you can do that with any camera. It's not like you can't shoot stills with the GH5. Uh, you most certainly can, but I've just, I just kind of haven't been. So it's been nice to kind of focus back on stills a little bit with this. So that's it. Those are the sequences I wanted to show you. Nothing crazy in there. One more thing I do wanna, I want to uh, show you, talk about before we sign off, and I know there's a bunch of questions that are coming up. I'm seeing them going by. I should glance and see if there's anything I wanna hit before I move on. Um, okay, Brent had asked, uh, let's just bring that up here real quick. Brent had asked, I know nothing about this camera. How long can you continuously snap pictures for? I'm, I'm like spec wise, I'm totally, I'm sorry. I don't have the numbers for you off the top of my head. The frames per second is 20 something. 18 was it? It's it's very very high frame rate in the digital when you're shooting electronic shutter, and that's something I'm going to talk about in just a moment here. Um, as far as how long you can shoot, if you mean before the buffer fills, that's going to depend on your memory card. If you have a really really fast memory card, like the Angelbird cards that are designed for video, but they're going to have the really fast write time, you're going to get better performance clearing the buffer. Whereas if you have an older slower card, like the cards that I'm working with are, um, I don't have any of the new cards yet. But uh, this is a Panasonic, it's an SDHC1. Let me see here, this is, this is the card that I've been using. Um, I've got, I am getting a couple of those Angelbird cards. They actually just reached out and they asked me to do a little um, review on them. So I'm very excited about that. But for now, this is what I've got. So I never felt like I ran out of the buffer for the sequences that I was doing, even at the high speed. Um, shooting for maybe a second or so, maybe a couple of seconds at the most. Um, I never had that be an issue, but in, these are even the slow cards. So I'm sorry I don't have a really good answer for you, but definitely having the faster cards is going to uh, going to help with that. Daddy, this is just such a fun age. Enjoy it while you can. Oh, I know. Next thing you know, they're all grown up. Hey, my oldest is 16. I'm teaching her how to drive. So, you know, that's uh, I got the range here. Okay. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about on this was when you go into the high speed mode, and just to kind of re repoint how this works, because it's so cool. Now that I had my camera all set up for this, let me, uh, let me readjust the shot. 
because it's so cool, I love this on this camera. You have on here a mode dial. Straighten out this thing, there we go. This mode dial at the top, this is a new piece of hardware that allows you to switch from your, like you would normally, your single to continuous, but it has two continuous presets, continuous one and continuous two. And you can set those to whatever you want. So I believe that the way I've got mine set up is a continuous one is a slower, uh, five frames per second or something like that. And then continuous two is set to the highest fr frame per second count, but that's electronic shutter, it has to go into electronic shutter. I don't know about you, but I, I hate the sound of electronic shutter. Like if I go into electronic shutter mode, it's usually because I want the camera to be silent. I want to take a picture and have it be totally silent, which is awesome, right? You're shooting something like a wedding and you have pure silence from the camera, superb. But I realized when you put it in the high speed shutter mode and you have it on silent, which is one of the first things that I did when I got the cameras, turn off all the sounds, you don't know that it's taking pictures, right? You push the button and you see a little red light up in the corner kind of like a video recording light, you see a little red thing, and then you'll notice that your frame count available shots goes down. But other than that, you don't know that you're actually taking pictures. So you kind of want to turn that electronic shutter on. So that's what I wanted to do here, is just show you in case you've got one of these, you're getting one of these, one of these things to watch out for. Um, let's see here, let me go, let me pull up the menu system here. And there we go. So we got the menu up and, is it up? Oh, no, didn't go up. Menu. Menu, picture in picture, why isn't that? Oh, look, it lost touch with my, let's use this one. There we go. Um, so there's the menu. So if you go to the gear menu and it's on page two of five, you'll see the beep. I usually have the beep volume. Well, beep volume at zero, because that's just like your autofocus beeps, hate that. But electronic shutter volume, I would normally turn that off. But if I turn that off right now and I go to take a picture, now I have to actually unplug this because when you have the sound, when you have the, HDMI cable plugged in, the sound gets turned off anyway, which is great because if you were doing this and recording video, you wouldn't want it making sounds. But right now, I'm going to push the button. It's taking pictures. It's taking a lot of pictures. And uh, I saw nothing. I saw a little buffer countdown going down, and that's it. I, I hear nothing. It's really hard to know that you're actually shooting, especially since when you're shooting, you're probably not looking in the lower corner. You're just looking at your subject. So let me plug this back in. And I'll show you. We'll turn that back on now turn this back on, and now I go into the beep, and I go down to electronic shutter volume, and let's bring it up. And I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it up loud just to make sure that you guys can hear it. Normally, I would do it like at the lower setting because the camera's up to my face. It's right by my ears unless I'm in a really loud environment. I'm going to be able to hear it, which actually might be. If you're shooting a, a sports game, you may need that louder volume because obviously there's going to be a lot of sound around you. But I'll go ahead and turn it up to the max volume on there. And let's unplug this again so that it works. And now you hear it. So it sounds like the shutter is going, so you hear that. So anyway, point of this is, if you're gonna shoot with the super high speed mode, it's going to go into electronic shutter. You probably normally turn off the electronic shutter sounds. You're gonna wanna turn it back on for this because otherwise you don't know that you're shooting and it's really hard to judge, like, did I, is it shooting, isn't it? Um, especially since, and I don't know if this is because it's a pre-production model or if the production ones are gonna be this way, the shutter is really soft on this. It, you don't have to push hard at all before it starts shooting. Um, it definitely has a different shutter feel than previous Lumix cameras. So again, that could just be this model, or it might be the way that it's designed. I don't know. Um, either way, you're gonna want that sound turned on. Okay, that's that. Let me see if there's any questions about this, and then we're gonna jump into a general Q&A because I haven't done that in a really long time, um, but we're gonna wrap this video up first. Ben5 Shuttle says, since the G, nine was announced, I'm in a dilemma as to what to buy first, GH5 or G9? Okay, this is a great question. Let's hit this one here. I'd set my heart on the GH5, so you have the best of both worlds, but I like the specs of the G9. That is a really good question. In fact, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna answer that in a Q&A that we're going to switch to right now. So for those of you watching live, sit tight. For those of you not watching live, click the button that's gonna pop up here, right where I am sitting here. It's gonna be, there's buttons everywhere. Just, you'll figure it out, find the button and switch over to it. We'll be right back. 